as well as the world's, we must measure up to the challenge of real and respectable strength. someone who has won a national championship at Washington College, has coached at the University of North Carolina, has coached at John Hopkins, and is now currently coaching at Lebanon Valley College uh, here in Pennsylvania. He will forget more lacrosse than most of us will collectively ever know. Coach John Haas. I'm not sure if that's a good thing going from Hopkins to Lebanon Valley College, but uh, uh, anyway, I appreciate you having me here. Uh, good morning, Happy New Year. Uh, the talk uh, that, that I'm going to give today is, is going to be real basic. Uh, I, just, I just have some drills by position. So we'll go goalie, defense, midfield attack, and then I got some team drills that I can, that I can show you. Videos from most of them. Uh, and then at the, at the end there where we're doing team drills, it'll just be kind of an outline. It won't be an actual video. Um, but anyway, it was, it was great coming here this morning. I, I uh, talking to some of the people here, um, friends of, of some of my old players, um, some of my old players, uh, coaches of some of my old players, and things that were coming when Washington College came out, and Johns Hopkins came out, two of the greatest places uh, that I think I've ever worked at. Uh, and, it's, and, and honestly, uh, in coaching, I've been close to 30 years now, and probably, I mean, I've learned at, at every school I've been at, but probably Johns Hopkins University was the place where I first got started. And uh, it, it was just a great opportunity. We had a, a athletic director, Bob Scott, who's legendary in our sport. Uh, I worked for two coaches there. When I first got to Hopkins, it was Don Zimmerman. Uh, and it was, I believe, three years with him. And then Tony Seaman came in, and I worked four years with him. And, and as a young coach, I'm going to be honest with you, and they're both, I'll use it again, legendary coaches, Hall of Famers, great coaches. One has won two or three national championships. The other one's had great success. But, it, but as a young coach, those two, they were white and black. I mean, they, they were the exact opposite of each other uh, in everything they did. So for those seven years... I was able to see things in two different perspectives, believe me. Um, one a little bit more straightforward, discipline, the other, you know, kind of out there, changing things, doing different things. It, so it was just a wonderful experience uh, being at Hopkins and learning, and then I hope I have learned over the years. Uh, so we're going to get started with the talk, um, and the, the, first, the first part will be the goalies. And I, listen, I don't know a tremendous amount about goalie play. I've had some great uh, assistant coaches work with me. One at Washington College, a guy by the name of Clint Evans. Um, and then I had Pat Olmer at the University of North Carolina. And I think all of you guys would agree it's, it's, it's ideal to have a goalie coach. I mean, not to have to worry about warming a goalie up or teaching them, showing them uh, you know, drills. Um, so I'm not one to say I know everything about, about the goalie position. But we, at all of our goalies every day, we try to get a half hour to 45 minutes of, of pre-practice work before the rest of the guys even show up. And I know sometimes at the youth and the high school level, that's going to be a little bit more difficult. And the other difficult task is that you may not have somebody to warm them up. So you may be doing the warm up while your team's trying to do something else. So to have that coach is great. But we let our goalies every day come out with two buckets. Um, and they come out with uh, lacrosse balls tennis balls, uh, jump ropes, and ladder. A every day they have to have that with them. They'll walk onto the field, they'll put their buckets down, we have them do a lap around the field, uh, and then we get started with things. So we'll, we'll go to the next uh, thing and we'll talk about. Uh, now, now, now look, I, mean, I should have uh, prefaced this before we got going. Everything you see here, all the videos, all the layout, I had nothing to do with. <laughs> now this is they, 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 the, the beauty of it is, is I had my guys, my team. I brought the goalies in, and I said, guys, these are some drills I want you to do. Here's the video camera. This is your project, and that's the truth. 
And that brought the midfielders in, defense and attack. So, you know, we put the onus on the kids a little bit. So some of this is going to be a little bit, well, you'll see. When we get to some of the dodging, it's sloppy, it's bad. And if they, if I mean, they're glad I wasn't out there with them because uh, it wasn't the way it should have been done. But that'll be good. We'll be able to point it out. But anyway, we'll go out to practice. Uh, the guy on the left, before we start, the guy on the left is a freshman for us. Um, the guy on the right is a sophomore. Neither one has played a minute of collegiate ball. Um, the first thing we tell our goalies when they show up in the fall is, is we'll go on the practice field and we'll tell them to juggle. I bet you 90% of the freshmen, that they don't know how to do it. They can't juggle. Uh, and I don't teach them how to do it. We tell them, Google it, find out how to do it. And when you come back in January, you've got to know how to juggle. And honest to God, every one of them can do it like it's, it's no problem. So the one on the left is a freshman, and he's going to be a little... Go ahead. He's going to be a little bit rough with it. He's going to look at his hands a lot. He can't keep his head up. Um, his feet are pretty steady, which isn't bad. Um, the guy on the right is doing the jump rope, and we'll have him do that. Uh, we'll just keep going with this. All right, so now if we just freeze it a second. Um, so the guy on the left jumping rope. So we'll have him you know, alternate feet. We'll have him, you'll see him, he'll, he'll box. He'll, he'll step forward, back, left, back, back, forward. Right back, okay? They'll do that type of thing. The guy on the, on the right now is, is juggling just with two balls. So instead of using three, he'll start with two in one hand. And, and, and you'll see the difference in the guy on the right. His head's, all, his head's up. He's not looking down at his hands a lot. Okay. One on the, uh, quite frankly, the one on the left is probably about two weeks into jumping ropes, so he's a little raw with it. But. Coach Hoff, yeah. could you just move over here? You're talking about it. All right, so we'll just go to the next clip. That's fine. Thank you. So, you know, we just say jump and rope is for agility, foot speed, conditioning, upper and lower body. If any of you have jumped rope, if you do it for a while, it gets you up in here, and it definitely gets you in your legs. If you go one foot, it'll get your calves going. Juggling is just hand-eye. Um, so those are things that we'll do every day. Uh, okay, we'll go to the next one. So the next drill we'll do is just a top hand clock. We'll get them out of the goal. We'll use the hash marks. Uh, the big thing I learned uh, with a guy by the name of Clint Evans that I, I mentioned earlier is with the goalies, it's just real basic. It's head, hands, feet. Like that's all he ever said. Head, hands, feet. And technically your top hand is the hand that's always gonna be doing things for you in the goal. So we'll just do a little step drill with our top hand clock. We'll use the hash mark step and gather, he goes back to the hash, step and gather, his free hand's behind him. Um, and we'll do that for, a lot of times we'll just start at a certain spot and go about 15 yards, turn around, go back. We might only do it four times. Um, but it's just the fundamentally, uh, the things that we're looking for there is to, to lead with that top hand. A big pet peeve of ours as goalies is, and, and listen, everybody does things differently, but we, when we step, we always tell them to gather. Uh, we, we can't stand when they step and they just stay like this. Uh, they leave themselves open. We tell them not to drag the back foot. Lift it and bring it. So we can go one more time with that if you want, Coach. So you bring his back foot. He's, he's, now he's bad. That's pretty good there. He steps and gathers. Okay, we can go to the next one, now, Coach. All right, so now we'll work two hands with the clock, so go ahead. So it's two hands, get back to the hash mark, <clears throat> make sure you step, make sure you gather, make sure you leave with the top hand, make sure you get your head and eyes on the, on the ball or wherever it is. And you can tell them, you know, just go, go two, stick side high, go two, stick so off side high, go two, stick side low. So now we've got the same concept though, we're using a hash mark, so there's a boundary as if there's a goal. Okay, we'll go to the next one. So now we just get them, now look, instead of using the hash marks, we'll put them back in the goal. So then they have their, their goal area that they've got to have a concept. Uh, and we'll talk in a minute about arcs, about how we use arcs, <laughs> whether it's high or low. So we'll go forward with this one. And now we actually have a ball. We'll use a tennis ball. I'll tell you about the tennis balls in a little bit here. This may be a lacrosse ball, I'm not sure. Um, we, we, 
the other thing about our goalie play too, and I know a lot of times uh, you'll warm goalies up and there'll be a rebound, a loose ball, and they'll just walk out and pick it up. We're really uh, uh, firm and tough about, like that wasn't good there. Um, play, play, play the play, play the play. So if there's a loose ball and you can get to it, get to it. If there's a loose ball and you can clamp and drag in, drag in. We want them to simulate being in the games. So he's, a, and once again, there's not a coach out here, so he's, he's kind of. So we'll go to the next one now. So that's the same now. Now we go to the side view. The reason we go to the side view, we are, uh, we are low arc. So for instance, um, you know, we, we just believe in the low arc. Some, some coaches believe in the, the high arc. So we'll keep him. Uh, you know, he's only, my golly, he's only a yard from goal line probably. We may bring him out a little bit more, but, but we won't bring him out into that area there. Um, we'd like to keep him on that low arc. So we'll go forward with that. And, and then, uh, go ahead. Try not to fall step. That's another thing about goalies. You know, you pump fake and they step at you. You gotta have some patience, stay in the goal. His top hand's pretty good. It's away from his body. The, the top hand is, is, he's got it up by the throat. You can bring that down a little bit. And then once again, when we do this, this drill here, his, his other hand is, uh, is behind his back. So if we freeze that. Now this is something, I'll go to Clint Evans again. He, I don't know why he did it, but he did, he did it. At every time it was time to warm our goalie up, uh, he would have him, he would have him come out and use and flip his stick and use his butt end, and actually draw an imaginary arc. Every time, I don't know why, but and it worked and it was it, what we did. Uh, so goalie would come out right before warm up, he would draw his imaginary arc, he'd get on it, he'd probably go around it a couple times, then we would start our warm up, low arc. So that's good. We'll go to the next one. So the top hand clocks, you know, just once again, things to stress. Drive with the top hand, put the other hand behind your back. Uh, we use hash marks. If you don't have a hash mark because it's a grass field, just find a sideline area so they can always recover to that area and get organized. Um, low arc versus a uh, high arc. We talked about that. Draw the imaginary arc. Step gather, never drag your back foot. And then once again, head, hands, feet. I mean, you think about it in the goal. I mean, your head, you gotta see the ball. I mean, you don't see the ball, forget about it. Uh, your hands, they've got to get there. Whether it's high, low, all sides, they gotta get there, and you must bring your feet with you. All right, we'll go to the next one. We won't, uh, the warm up, I won't go into this as much. You can run this. So here's two, two thoughts. You know, I got a friend that played with me in high school, and he's, he's down in the Williamsburg area, and he's a goalie. Um, he, he, he's a believer in, like a lot of goalies say, okay, give me five here and give me five here and I want four here and keep them. He, he doesn't believe in that. He thinks they should get in the goal and you should just shoot. Um, you know, you come off the bench in a game, you know, you're getting in there and here come the shots. So that's one theory. The other theory, which we do, is we work our way into the warm up. Um, so we'll, we'll usually go stick side high, stick side offside hip high, hip high offside, stick side low, offside low, okay? We usually work that progression, uh, and then once we're finished with that, we'll put some on the ground. Um, then we also, we, we love using our players to shoot once the goalie's warmed up, because, you know, once again, you don't want us continually, every day, get the same coach shooting on you. So we'll pick, usually when the goalie is ready to go, we'll get about three or four maximum of our guys and we'll feed them and they're gonna shoot. And, they, and they're, gonna, they're gonna split, shoot on the run, they're gonna time in room, stand still and shoot. Um, so we'll, we will use those guys. So we won't go through the, the progression. The other thing you can do with this, see like that there, we play that out. Um, the other thing you can do with this, he's just catching, throwing the ball back to the coach. We also use outlet passes. So in other words, he makes his save and he's got to throw it you know, 30 yards up to the corner. So instead of just continually throwing it back to the coach, you might have a couple injured guys that can just catch the ball for you. Get them up high and, and use, them, use them as an outlet. Um, and 
And then after this, uh, we do, so we'll freeze it here. <coughs> I, I don't, well, actually, go to the next, we'll go to the next one. So pipe to pipe. They, without playing this, right now we have the coaches out top. They're at about 12 yards, and, you know, we'll, we'll have uh, the other coaches making his way in here. But we'll have this coach. He's going to play this coach here on the pipe. We feed across, and he's got to get to the other pipe, and then we'll take a shot. Um, and I won't have to play that video as much. Th that's a little easier, but where we, where we also drill them on pipe to pipe is we'll put a coach at about five yards on each side, at least inside the hash marks, maybe a little lower, let's say about three yards. And we just feed the ball back and forth in front of the goal. And the goalie's got to get from one side to the other. Um, some of the things that we work on, we, we really exaggerate. So if I'm a right-handed goalie, and we're going to feed it across here, we teach our goalie to step. We don't have this on video. We teach our goalie to step, sticks here, bang it in the corner of the goal. He's got to bring his stick up into the corner, make them shoot offside. Then the other way, we just come across, try to get our hip a little bit off that pipe. So we do pipe to pipe from out top, and then pipe to pipe from in, you know, once again, in real tight in there. Um, so I'm not going to run through this, the, the pipe to pipe outside. It's not that difficult. We'll go to the next one. All right, so then we'll, we'll move on to the defense. Uh, these drills, we don't have a ton of drills in here. We do a lot of footwork stuff. Yes? Coach, I just want to ask a small point. Uh, on the length of the golden shaft, do you have any recommendations or preference? Uh, a little bit longer than shorter. We don't have, we had our, the, the one goalie who was juggling there on the left side, I said, he, he came in with a real short shaft and we did not like, I did not like that. Um, I, and, and, I, and the other one, the other thing about, so I like the longer shaft personally. And then the other thing about our goalies is the one you saw in here, his hands are pretty close and I would separate them a little bit more. Now that goalie that you see in the video, he is not mine, okay? He, he's, he plays somewhere else, he's a local kid, and he, he was able to help us out with this, with this video, but I would separate his hands a little bit more. How long are you going to up for it? Well, yeah, we, we try to get two coaches to four guys. So if we can get 15 minutes of goalie, that's great. Sometimes longer, but, but once again, that's really hard to do. So what you might do is if, if, if you only have like a, say a 12 minute or or roughly around their time frame, you know, have them, they can come out, they, we, our guys take one lap, they jump the rope, they juggle, I mean, you can do that in, you know, let's say three minutes if they push it, maybe pick one or two of those drills and then just warm them up. Ideally, yeah, at least 15 to 20 minutes. We give them a lot of work, and then, and then before I forget, and I'll get on to the next question, what, what brings in the tennis balls for us? I'll go to Clint Evans again. I'm sitting in my office at Washington College years ago, and he comes walking in, shuts the door, <clears throat> and he looked at me and says, Coach, you know how many shots a goalie takes a year? I said, I got no clue. I really don't. And he had numbers. He literally had numbers. It's, it's thousands and thousands of shots. You think about warming up every day, uh, pregame warming up, games, everything you do as a goalie. And it gets to the point and you've probably had goalies where it gets to the point where they've had enough. They, they just, they're bruised, they're battered, they're beaten. Just use tennis balls. Every fundamental skill stays the same, but the ball isn't going to hurt you now. Every fundamental skill stays the same. What's the justification for the low arc as opposed to the high arc? Yeah, why you I just like it because of the pipe to pipe, being able to get there. The high arc actually takes... I mean, I, I, once again, I don't know everything, but I think it takes that angle away from up top. But if you, if, if you have teams that wing dodge and, and penetrate from X a lot, I just think staying lower, and, and, then I, and I like that, especially when, and then because of that, stay consistent when the ball's out top. Coach, how do you, since goalies are a different breed from everybody else, do you do more nice love versus tough love because you know, you don't want the kid to shut off and not yeah. win the game. I'm just wondering psychologically how you work. We, we uh, I think the, the communication is a lot more open with a goalie. Um, 
Now, now once again, if you if we have four goalies and we went to all of them and said, well, how do you want to get warmed up? They're all going to say something different. But, so we we got it. We got to we got to kind of tighten that. We just say, look, this is how we're going to do it, and then we'll evaluate every two weeks. And and them and, and our goalies are close, and they may say after two weeks, coach, can we stop this? We need more help on the feeds from behind. But I, I think we try to structure it and but listen to them a lot. Okay. Yeah. You know, and I think more more the more of the listening is pregame. His practices are what they are, but when you're getting ready to play in a game, they may like something a little different, and that's okay, then just give it to them. Okay, so we'll go we're on defense now. So defensively. Uh, you know, we do the same thing, and this, is, this goes way back to my Hopkins days, jumping rope. Every defenseman has a jump rope. Just, you got to have a jump rope. Uh, so we'll come out to practice, they'll have a, and, and each position brings their own gear. So we have a freshman defender, he's got his bucket there that he's got to bring out, he's got the cones, the ladders, we have probably two or three ladders, jump ropes, and then nubs. We don't use them a lot, the, the, you know, the sticks without the heads on them and the tennis balls on the end. We don't use them a tremendous amount. Um, but we jump rope probably daily. And we may just spend three to four minutes to get them loose. Uh, and, and then, uh, you know, cones we always bring out for agility work, which you'll see. Uh, for the ladders, if, if you have grass surface, you know, like if you don't, if you don't have the money, you don't want to buy a ladder, my first year or two at LVC, we had the, the grounds guys, they would go out and actually, they'd just paint one on the grass for me. You just use the, the paint that you put on the grass. And it would wear out, but weekly they would just repaint it again. Sometimes we would put three or four of those along the sidelines and we could use them. Um, so we'll go to the next. So the, uh, the plus passing, so there's two versions to this. We're in tight. This is kind of a good stick work drill. Uh, and then if you want, you can extend it where you get more conditioning in and, and more running in. So we're basically, uh, we're just set up in, a, in, in, there's guys here, 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 and here. So they're in a diamond. I think the first thing we're gonna be doing is just a little, these two are gonna run at each other, and then he's gonna throw it to that guy, this guy's gonna run and throw it to that guy. I think they're just doing a little hitch move. All right, so we'll go ahead. And you can do anything you want in terms of stick work. So a little hitch, and they throw across their body, come at each other, a little hitch, throw across the body. <clears throat> so once again, we're in tight. So there's not a lot of running, but it's, but it's in tight stick skills. If you want to spread them out, you can spread them out. So now we're going to do a face dodge and throw across. And if we stop it here, so we... we he comes, he face dodges, opens up and throws it. You can obviously come, face dodge, and not open up, and just throw it here. But we're, we're opening up and throw it. Go ahead. <clears throat> and it, I mean, I'm, just, I'm not trying to, I'm just saying, some of these drills you'll see, there's no coach out there. So they're kind of, you know, some, some of them, you'll see some of the attack men need to go a little faster when they're dodging. So we're still doing a face dodge here. Uh, now we're gonna just uh, drag it underneath and flip it. So, you know, it's not, is that fundamentally sound? I don't know, I mean, but it's something you may have to do in a game. So they're bringing it under and they're flipping it to the next guy. We try to do all kinds of different stick skills in this. So we'll go on to the next one then. Is that good, everybody's good with that? We'll go to the five cone drill next. Um, so we're in a diamond with the cones, one out here somewhere, and then one in the middle. Uh, and then you'll see as we, as we go forward, I think it's a shuffle and open up with the right foot. Some of the, uh, you know, now right now we don't have them, we don't have them going 100 miles an hour, uh, but some of the keys will freeze it. So some of the keys here, uh, we tell them to, to get low base, obviously. Uh, hands out in front with the stick out in front, nothing in on the hips. Uh, and, we, and we really try to have them exaggerate their drop and open. Like take your time with it, work on your feet. That's all you're working on is your feet right now. 
And then we can speed it up if we want. We can open up the cones more if we want. <laughs> some point they'll, yeah, then they've changed their direction a little bit here. You can do a lot of different things with this. So now we're going to back pedal and get there. Now the key to this one, if we stop this one, <coughs> so what, what we want here is we're going to, we're going to, uh, we back pedal and when we come out to the next cone, when we come out to the next cone, they don't do it great here. What we try to teach our guys to do is when you're coming out to the cone, as the closer you get, the smaller your base gets, and then we have them chop a couple. And then they sit like this. So they have to chop a couple and sit. And then they'll back paddle. Like that youngster just did it right here. If we froze that one, this guy just did a real nice job. He came out, he chopped his feet a little bit got control, and then went back, and he's a freshman. Uh, all right, so we'll go on to the next one. So the four cone, uh, everybody defensively has concepts. Everybody tells people where to direct people. I mean, it's just defense. You know, obviously behind the goal, uh, most, most teams, you know, don't want them to get top side. Most teams up top want them to come down the alley. You could have games where you make everybody go left-handed. It's just it's whatever you choose to do. Everything in this drill, the concept is keep them behind, keep them down the alley. Um, one of the things I learned a long time ago from Bob Scott, longtime coach and athletic director at Johns Hopkins, you take the goal and split it in half. Like lacrosse isn't that difficult. If you're on this side of the goal, you're a left-hander. <laughs> that's, that's what you are. You're not going to see many right-handed things happening over there. And you should always have that concept. You take the goal and split it in half and get on that side, you're a right-hander. Now, he may drive up, inside roll, shoot left. He may drive left and turn and shoot right, but everything he's doing is left-handed. So this drill, uh, we start in the middle, uh, and, and if he comes up here, it's approach. It's top foot, so if he comes from here to here, be his right foot upfield, square to the sidelines. He'll get back in. And we're going to just say the ball is going in this direction. Never lose sight of the ball. All right, so go ahead. I think this, the one guy will go to the back. Yeah, he'll go to the back cone. So we're watching this guy here. He should come out into that. That's pretty good. Back in. Now he'll, he'll lose sight of the ball. Right there, he's, he turned away. We're telling him the ball's coming here, so open up the other way so he sees the ball. We'll go that one more time. So we'll just watch 24 again right here. He sits down, he's back into the middle. Get out wide, sit down. He still hadn't turned his back to the ball, now this time he does. See, the ball went there. So that's just the four cone for approach there. Um, we can go out to the next one. All right, so we'll hold on the midfield. So the only other thing that we do do a lot with our defensemen, and I don't have any video of this, is we do a ton of stick work with them. Uh, we'll take, uh, uh, we'll take a goalie, two defenders in tight, and we just roll a ground ball out to the left. And the rules that we give our defender, so if he picks it up, I wish I had a drawing, but if I'm a defender and there's the goal and there's another defender, I get the ground ball and we tell our guys, the first thing you do is look. If there's no, if there's no, a lot of times there ain't going to be any green up, up that way. We tell them to sprint to the sidelines. You get as wide as you can, as quickly as you can. The other defender gets out wide as he can, as quickly as he can. So it's a ground ball, sidelines, sidelines, and then we have our goalie with his terminology, swing it or over. So if he says swing it, it's coming to the goalie, we're going over. If he says over, the goalie's shut off, he goes all the way. And we'll do that for a little bit. Then we'll put a third guy in. Uh, then we'll use five guys, and we'll tell them where to go with the ball. We have five guys, we'll throw it at the goalie. Two get wide, goal line, one holds middle, other two high. We'll say we're gonna, whatever side we go to, it's always gonna go over, middle, same side, opposite, and back in. So we'll just put a ton of stick work in for the defenders, um, <coughs> along with the footwork stuff. Uh, the other, uh, one other drill that we did use, and, and 
you know, once again, I get a lot of stuff. I had two boys that I was fortunate. I had two sons that played college lacrosse, and, and, uh, and one of them would open up a little bit more than the other one in terms of what they're doing in practice. And one played at the University of Maryland, one played at Duke University. Um, but I used to love the way Maryland would, would do things defensively. Um, and they, they had one drill, which I didn't have one here, where we wouldn't have any sticks. And we would put two lines of defense. I mean, basically, on, you know, if I'm a, the goal's here, and I'm just here, with, I pretend like I have the ball, and all we worked on, we'd tell that guy to drive right-handed, and we would just work on getting our hips, turning, turning, and pushing them back. So it was a, it was a pressure drill. Um, but, you know, we learned, I learned so much from those guys, because I would go down and watch their practices as much as I could. It was hard to with us practicing. Uh, and then you'll see some of these dodging drills that we get into with the midfield and the attack. Uh, my son, Will, who played at, uh, at Duke, would, would talk, we talk about it a lot when he'd come home for, for the holidays. Um, but anyway, we'll go on to the midfields now. Now, the first, the first part of the midfield, <coughs> and once, this is stuff that my son, Will, showed me, and Coach Janowski does a lot of. Uh, where, it's, where it's dodge, uh, drag out, throw, throw across your body, or dodge, roll, and throw up top. I'm going to tell you, before we show this video, the middies are horrible in this drill. Okay? They were on their own, and you'll see. It's, it's sloppy. It's slow. Uh, we'll get into some of the points. They really don't have it, so we'll show the first one if we can. So we just one line up top. We'll catch right, pull left, and then when we get to, we're going to go about 10 yards. We should be dodging hard here. We should be dodging, oh, we'll freeze it right there. So when he dodges, and we'll have, usually have a cone. They don't, I don't think they have cones. So he's, he's going to catch it left from this guy. He's going to pull right, go hard. <coughs> we'll get to the point of pressure or slide coming, and we teach him to pull away. And if there's space where they pull away and we want to go back up top, if we're midfield dominated and we dodge from up top, we throw it right away. That's what they should be doing here, but they're not really doing it. So we'll go ahead. The speed should be faster, slow. He rolled. He shouldn't have rolled. So he pulls. He gets here. He should be dragging out further. We do a ton of this. Right now it's just slow. A little bit better there. Now actually, this, this kid's a senior. He dropped the ball, but he does it the right way. He dodges. See how he came straight out to the sidelines. Threw it across his body. Um, and I'll get to some points with that. So then after this, and, and look, if you've got you know, 15, 20 minis, then you can go two different groups. You, don't, you, can, you'll need a, you can set up cones and go two groups and just get repetitions with it. Um, I'm not sure if the – I don't think we showed the, uh, the rollback. So then the next phase is we do this, but then when we get to the line, we tell the guy, the defender's on you. Like, you don't have space. There's no space. So then we tell him to roll away from pressure and bang it up top. So it's throw across your body or roll away. And we'll get, you know, let's try to get as many reps for about seven to eight minutes. And, and, and you know, it should be speed, crisp passing. Yeah, so it's everything about across the body, but we also roll away. We can go to the next one. <coughs> So the things we talk about, like crisp passing, they didn't have any of that there. Stick protection, not much of that went on. Uh, communication, it's huge. Like everybody has terminology when they play lacrosse. Um, you know, if, if, if the guy, and I, I'll show our three, three system in a minute, but so if he's dodging, he gets there, he drags to the sidelines, the guy up top, um, he'll usually say top. As soon as he hears that, he knows, bang, he's going to throw it right up top. Um, you can say one more if you want, we'll just yell top. Um, decisions on when to throw it across your body or roll, and that's, that's obviously is, it depends on where that defender is. Uh, and then the, the concept of this is to, when you get to the point of no return, the slide's coming, the pressure's there, you know, we tell them to drag hard to the side. Uh, don't come upfield, don't go downfield. Drag hard, so we punch our, our outside hand towards the sideline to get your stick away. If there's no pressure, you can throw it across. If there is, roll, get your other hand on and make that pass. We'll go to the next one. There's another one. These guys don't do a great job, but <clears throat> we do a lot of hitch dodging. So if your team has to dodge from the corners or the wings, goal line extended, 
which I think is a very vulnerable place to dodge. I mean, everybody dodges up here and obviously behind. Now, this is a little bit tougher uh, because I think when you dodge from the wings, you obviously you could have a sneak, uh, you can have an inside slide, step high, and I think you can always get the skip pass a lot easier from this dodge. So this drill is a line here and a line here. The passing's not real crisp. They can do it a lot better, but it's a fire to cross. He should have about a, a, a three yard run at a cone and then step up hard. So this guy over this side is going to catch. He should be coming at the hash, step up with his hitch move, fire for his right hand, then the next guy will throw there. What we also will do, because this is just sort of a two, two group uh, way of doing it, we'll put a third guy up top. So we'll bang it here, we'll bang it here, then he'll dodge. So a lot of times this pass is not always going to be a reality. It's going to be here, then there, and we dodge. So go ahead, we'll just show it a little bit. Hands back. You know, in this drill, we try to tell them to get their hands back, their sticks high, you know, uh, high to low. Uh, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes we'll say we want everything bottom third. Everything you shoot should be bottom third right now. And then, I mean, and they'll try to do that. Um, and then we'll just tell them, well, we don't care where you shoot. Like that kid just had a nice shot. His hands were back. Um, so that's just, so once again, the, the key, we'll go to the next video. The key to that is, is spacing when you receive the ball. So I get the ball, I'm on goal line, there's the goal. You should have about three yards where you can come right at this guy and try to take your goal side foot, if I'm a righty, my left foot, stepping at him, and you want him to fight just a little bit. As soon as it happens, we're stepping up field hard um, and trying to get the high to low shot. Uh, go right at your defender, and we talked about, you know, with the jab step, whether you're a righty or a lefty. We'll go to the next one. So this is, uh, I, we saw, I saw this at the convention, actually, the other weekend. Um, so a, a good thing to do, if you have an offense that you run, um, and, we, and I'll be honest, we only have like three different things that we'll do, uh, two, two different sets that we like with patterns out of it. <clears throat> and then our third offense, which my kids like the best, uh, th there is no, there is no set. It's, it's, uh, it, it, we give them like three, we give them four rules and we call it chaos. And uh, they, they can go where they want, when they want, how they want. Um, but you gotta always have two outlets. You gotta always move without the ball. It's just, uh, defensively, it's really hard. Uh, as long as they keep their spacing and have some structure and have some discipline and what they're doing is pretty effective. But this is one of the, we'll umbrella the middies up top and run our, uh, this is how we'll run our offense. So when one of these guys dodges, you know, we're gonna, the ball's gonna eventually go from here to here to here, and he's gonna dodge. And when he dodges in our offense, you know, these two guys have to exchange, and then our attack's actually moving. Their attack's not involved in this drill, but they're moving also when we do this. I'm gonna go back again and say it gets really, uh, it would be a lot crisper, a lot harder, a lot faster if we had some coaches out there, but they did a pretty good job. So we'll go ahead with this. The seven has the ball, I think. He's supposed to do that. He's doing that. All right, so stop. So if that seven, when he gave it up, we can have him go over top or he can come underneath. But these two guys always exchange. What you'll see after we run this drill a little bit is this guy coming from the middle, exchanging. A lot of times we'll turn his back. I mean, we, we, really, we really stress, try not to ever turn your back to the ball. Because uh, he you got this one guy who's always got a good vision. He's got he can feed he can move the ball Just don't turn your back to the ball. You never know when it's going to come So this is part of our offense, and this is why we run this drill right. Yeah, you can you can incorporate a hitch move when 25 got it and you can tell there's not a coach out there. These guys are stupid. Like, they could just get in three lines and do it and <laughs> rotate, but they're just 25 came from here all the way over there. It's okay. I mean, see, like, he doesn't have his back. He's not looking at the ball seven when he came through there. Should be out about 12 yards. He shouldn't be in at seven yards. But anyway, the, the concept of this drill is it's what we do in our offense, so we run this as a, as a stick work and a shooting drill. Basically, you're getting two things out of this. So we'll go to the attack room. So we do the same thing. Go ahead, Coach. We do the same thing with the attack, but from behind the goal. So it's no different. <clears throat> we dodge. 
get to five, drag out, throw across. Dodge, get to five, roll, throw back, okay? One line behind the goal. We can also do the, go ahead, coach. Should be more speed. The guy behind, I mean, you want to try to time it where, you know, you're, I see he's kind of running into the ball a little bit. Slow, too slow, bad pass. One, he's a freshman, he's got a lot of work ahead of him, you'll see. No, no left. Another freshman, slow, he's still playing at that left. He's got to speed it up, bad pass. So we get to five yards. He, now that guy there, if we back it up, I don't know if you can, Coach. So, so stop right there, see where he is? What we want out of this drill is dodge, and when you get here, you want to go there, not there. So we'll just do this for a while. I mean, he, he's got to watch the crease. That poor young, so he's blown out of knee two years in a row now. Um, but he's back, and, and, and you can see the speed. This is a more an upperclassman throwing the ball. You'll have another young guy. But we do this a lot. Um, He's rolling, that guy rolled that time. We want to push hard though. You know, once again, they're not quite getting, but you want to really dodge hard. And we never haven't talked about stick protection. I mean, a lot of times, I tell you, most attackmen now are dodging two-handed. I mean, that's, that's it's power. It's all power. Um, everything they're, you're, they're doing. But you want speed. Um, you want to dodge hard to that spot and then pull away. And a nine did a pretty good job there. He does a, does a pretty good job there. Um, okay, so we can go on to the next one. So we talk, it's the same as the middies. Just stress crisp passing on a line, on a rope. Stick protection, communication. Uh, once again, decision on whether you're gonna throw it across your body or roll away, punch to the sidelines. And then with the attack, a lot of it, and even with the middies, a lot of it becomes timing. So here comes a <laughs> midi dodging down and they're exchanging. That guy that exchanges to the middle he wants to be in the middle of the goal when he's ready to receive the ball. He doesn't want to be, you know, to the to the far side. He doesn't want to be too close to the guy with the ball. So a lot of it is timing too, and we'll work on that after, you know, with repetition. We go to the next one, coach. So this one, we like this drill a lot. Uh, this is a concept. I mean, it's just basic, but I mean, I, we taught, we got, we coached this at Hopkins until we were like, with our attack until we were blue and red. You know, you dodge and from behind and, and you, and, and look, you're going to get to this spot here and that goalie is going to be yelling, hold, squeeze, turn, whatever they yell. So what's, what's the defender doing? He's engaging in you. He's getting into you. He's trying to stop your penetration. So what we, we would teach our attackmen, as everybody probably does, is you can't stay on the same arc. Like, it's, you're, you're, you're giving him the advantage. Pull away. Just just pull away. And it's, it's, it's basic stuff. You're going to get a little bit of off balance by the defender and then attack right back again. So we just put three cones in here. Um, and, and our attack actually does a decent job with this one. He's going to dodge to that cone. As soon as he gets there, sometimes we'll have him get there and sit for about a second. You know, sit low and then pull away. They'll go real quick. They'll get here, pull away, go. But sometimes we have them sit there, feel almost like there is penetration, then get away, then come back and shoot. So we'll go ahead with that. And you could, the cones probably, you know, you could probably move them out a little bit. We do this drill a lot. We'll go right and left side. Um, you'll see what the guy's shooting. When they get to this top cone, don't fade. You know, he's turned his, <coughs> turned his shoulders. He got to the goal. Um, pretty good there. And that's not bad. He, this is a young freshman. He's another pre he's, this is the freshman that he's got speeds to think he's got to learn. Although he did get a 4-0 <coughs> in the classroom. That's the honest guy truth, so that was good. We don't have many of them. <laughs> um, 
Matter of fact, he's the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I ever had any of it. I know we did it at Washington College. <laughs> So, so the other thing you can do with this now is he, well, oh, that's fine, we can stay on this side. So you come here, here, when you get to the third cone, you can face dodge, you can roll inside, you can do different things when you get to that final cone, but you may want to pull them out a little bit. So everything we're doing is front. Just get to the cone and shoot. So he could come here and maybe he dips under and shoots, or you know, maybe he inside rolls if the cone's probably a little bit out here. So you can change it up a little bit um, if you'd like. All right, and we'll go to the next one. I'm not sure my time here. Um, all right, dodge from X. Uh, and then the other thing, you know, a lot of times we don't have to just dodge from X. We can pull the guys down into the corner. A lot more effective there coming out at that angle. Um, you know, defender locks in. We talked about it. Create space. Throw defender off balance. And then third cone, you have options. Roll, hit your face. And we'll go to the next one. We just do a little rapid fire. So we got we do a million shooting drills. So I just figured I'd put one in here. We put them in a, in a box, um, and it's just constant movement. So these guys are cutting diagonal for a shot. Uh, he feeds. He feeds. They step up. He goes to that line. He goes to that line. We just keep going. Go ahead. And they should be going fast. That's the other thing I tell you. You know, everybody talks about it when you when you pre this. A lot of this stuff here is pre-practice drills. So before we go to half fields, full fields, riding and clearing, and man up, man down, we'll spend 20 minutes with this. So the middies will be doing something, the attack will be doing something, uh, the defenders will be doing something. By that time, the goalies are warmed up; they can get incorporated in with the defenders. Um, so we'll go to the next one. Everybody, everybody's fine with that one. This is a, a, we do this a lot, this is total timing, uh, and, and it's just more of an inside game. So we have them stacked, one here, one on the crease, one behind. And it's a read game by this guy, so the guy behind, if he goes right, we curl off and get to X. This guy here, as the guy dodges right, should be stepping with his left. We don't do this real well, but step with the left on the transfer of the ball, Cut that way. So we'll go ahead. This guy should not catch it any further than X. <coughs> so we get him in an eye, same drill. Guy on the inside's reading the dodger. He'll read. So he went the same way. <coughs> Got to speed it up, time it better. Not a good job by 10, and then he does that. So that's okay. I mean, he can, he can shoot behind the back, but he's got to score. But now, you go back on this one if you could, Coach. Now, 32, now 32 is it, so we'll freeze it here. So 32 is a, he's a freshman. This guy dodges this way. You can see, look, see what he's doing here. He's starting to inch that way. When the transfer of the ball is when you come back and get to that pipe. He does an okay job there. Drifts that way, and here he comes hard to the pipe. <coughs> Good handle, bad pass, good shot. So that's we just work on this drill a lot. A lot of it's timing, a lot of it's inside. It's basically inside shooting. You're working on some inside shooting. You're working on some reading off ball, whichever way the guy goes. Um, but but use the same concept. That's not good. Use the same concepts fast. You know. I, I, well, let me take that. Start them out slow. Get them organized, and then go game speed. Work on game speed and timing. Um, okay. Yeah. So once again, with that inside drill, it's dodging hard, off-ball play, inside finishing, um, timing, communication, that helps a lot in that drill. So we'll go to the next one. Um, so I'm going to just quickly go over a couple team drills. Any questions with any of the positional stuff? Um, enough, nothing earth shattering, but we have some things that we like to work on, and hopefully that helps you out. Um, what, after, after we do those positional work, uh, drills, whatever they might be, we either go right into stretching, so that's all before stretching. So, so sometimes it may not be as fast as you want it to be because you're, you're just trying to get them loose. Um, sometimes before stretching, we'll, we'll do some of these drills here. The full field passing, we probably do daily. Um, and we'll go to the next, next clip. 
Uh, so we line up like this. We got our goalies, two are here and two are here, and then uh, we break up into three even lines on each side. You know, it doesn't matter where you go. You go anywhere you want. Um, defense, attack, whoever. So we'll start, the whistle will blow. Let's say the first time we're gonna say we're gonna catch right-handed, throw across your body. So all, the whistle will blow, we get three balls all the time. We don't, we don't just do one ball, we'll have three balls going. So we're gonna catch right and throw across our body. This guy's gonna come here, back, catching it right-handed and just turning. Time it, here, back, turn. And we just get it going. Now when it gets here, the goalie's gonna yell, swing it which means he throws it to the goalie, goalie throws it there, and we just keep going. So it's right-handed, throw across your body. Then we go uh, right-handed, same concept, right-handed, roll, throw left. We'll get that going. Uh, we'll go over the shoulder right. So it's, it's break here and then upfield, we throw it over the shoulder. Here, upfield, we throw it over the shoulder. You can do a million different things. You've got everybody on your team involved and the goalies are involved. Uh, sometimes that we'll take this line and get it out of there <clears throat> and slide them down a little bit and these guys up. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We'll take this line and move it out. So that the line doesn't exist. We have one, two, three, four, five. Now we, we break up. He hits them. This guy breaks across. We hit him. Breaks across. We hit him. Breaks across. We hit him. We'll either go to the goalie and hit here. He'll turn. He's got to carry to at least the 50 and throw to the other goalie who throws to that goalie, and we keep that going five lines instead of six lines, okay? Um, we'll go to the next one. So just a, just a walk through kind of a defensive thing. Uh, we have our offensive guys here in the white. We just call it our spoke approach. Ball's here. Uh, concepts on defense are where, and this, is, this isn't like you're not coming out to to check the guy or to, or to run him to the sidelines. It's all about how you get to him. And we tell the offensive guy to try to go to where the defender doesn't want him at about 75% speed. And I just pull away and let him throw it. So, you know, the ball will come here. He comes out, takes away this, the middle. He tries to push middle, shouldn't be able to get it, comes, throws it. He's back in, he comes out, gets top side. He tries to beat him top side, he can't, he'll throw here. And this guy will come back and we'll keep the ball going in the direction. And then we'll rotate the crease guys. So it's, it's, not, a, it's not a full contact drill. It's more about approaching the ball on defense. Uh, have the offensive player try to push to where he doesn't want you to go. And they know where. We'll tell them, you know, when you get the ball here, we want you to try to get to the middle. He's going to take it away. You know, you're going about 70%. If he takes it away, just pull away, make that next pass. And we work on uh, we work on that a lot. All right, so we'll go to the next one. This is uh, I saw this at the convention. We do that. I've been doing this for years and years and years. But this is a, a, a conditioning drill. We'll have five guys on offense and five guys on defense. Um, and we'll and we'll we'll say it's hard to tell them to keep it in the box. There's two ways to go about doing this. You tell them defensively. Uh, you are to pressure out. You are not to let your guy catch the ball on offense. You can backdoor. You can go pick. You can you can uh, V cut in and out. You can do anything you want, but the ball's got to exchange. Um, we like to do it, and this is this is a conditioning drill. You don't have an option. You can't backdoor. Uh, you can't front swing. You can't pick. So let's put the ball here. This guy has to break in and out, break in and out until he's open, and he can make that pass. And I tell you, it, 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 well, it's sloppy because it's hard to do on offense. Um, but when the drill's over, they're, they're conditioned. They, they'll work hard to get the ball. Uh, and once they receive the ball, there's pressure, and they got to run uh, and try to get it to the next guy who's being pressured. Um, so we, we, do, we don't do this a lot, but we'll do it once a week, try to, especially like for yeah. us. I mean, if we're playing, I, you know, Stevens, like, yeah, we got to work on this thing every day. Um, some teams we don't have to. We'll go to the next one. Uh, we call this a pressure grounder drill. We love this drill. We do it every day probably or every other day. Uh, we just get, it, get in the box. We have four offensive players. We put a defender on goal line, a defender on goal line, a defender out top in the middle of these two guys. So they're at the box. And then we have our fourth defender He's probably five yards inside uh, 
the midline. I always have the balls right here. Usually what I'll do, I can roll it out and we'll play it. So hopefully, uh, you know, whoever comes up with it, it ends up becoming a four on four. What we do a lot though, is I'll throw it right here, right at the beginning. And all, it's an automatic four on three. And they've gotta be able to play that. We look for this pass right away. Uh, when I throw it here, he usually steps here. We're gonna get this and then we try to get our four on three. You still have a trailer coming in. So if you can hold them off a little bit, it's fine. So we either go right to the offensive guy. Very rarely do I go to the attackman, but we can. We can try to get a skip. Usually go to him, or we just sit the ball in here somewhere, roll it in there, and they play a four-on-four -four pressure grounder, fourth defender coming in, and then we uh, we try to check up at that point. When do you re when you coach, when you release the fourth guy? Defensive right away. Right, okay. right away. So so I have the ball. As soon as I throw it, he's coming. So, so, yeah, so offensively, it's decision. You, you, you know, you're not going to be able to sit and survey. You have to make some decisions and try to get a... So the drill, you know, the, number one is we can turn it into a pressure grounder drill where we just throw the ball out, or we just... A lot of times, I'm not sure why we always call it that, but a lot of times we just throw it there. And so it's an immediate four-on-three. We're trying to get a goal as quickly as we can without that fourth defender getting in. Um, and it, it's just, it's good. Because then once he, if we don't get anything right away and he comes in, uh, we check up. We don't do a lot of uh, three on threes. And, and, and if we go into a shorter game, we do a ton of four on fours. So anyway, hopefully some of this stuff, like some of this stuff you've seen, I'm sure. And some of it hopefully will help you. Um, you know, I just once again, thank you uh, for giving me a chance to be here. It's, it's great to see you all. And, and I wish all of you the best of luck this, this uh, spring. Um, we're really excited just to put a little pump into to Lebanon Valley. We're really excited about what we do there. Um, I've been at some really good places, and, and Lebanon Valley College is a special place. Uh, I got there six years ago. There was no program. Uh, there was no goals, balls, anything. So it's been a lot of fun. Um, we've created a pretty solid Division III program. And, and we compete in our conference uh, yearly right now. It's a great school, so any of you high school coaches, if you got players, let me know. Um, but it is, it's a wonderful place, and, and uh, I think we've done some pretty good things with it. So, thank you.